Hey guys, we're back with another video. This is chapter 14, and it's going to talk about American imperialism, and that is what section 1 will be over. All about what is imperialism and why does the U.S. do it. So first of all, imperialism is stronger nations extending their economic, political, or military control over weaker territories, basically saying that the stronger countries take over weaker countries and use them for resources or for political gain. So there's a few reasons for global competition and imperialism. One, in the U.S. we think of Manifest Destiny. We think way back in the 1800s where we were expanding west and claiming that territory as our own. Same type of thing, but now we're thinking globally for d in different countries. So there's three factors for why that we take over other countries. One, to strengthen our military. The more people that we control, the more powerful we can be. Secondly, for new markets with our economics, if we take over more countries, it means we have uh, more resources we can use to build and produce more things. In cultural superiority, we, as in America, we believe that we are more superior and therefore need to help more people. Here's a map of different where some countries were taken over by others. So military strength. So Alfred T. Mahan, he is one of the major leaders in the Navy, and he's going to talk to the government and make sure that we can expand our naval fleet. So from 1883 to 1890, we're going to build nine cruisers, and we're going to build some battleships like the USS Maine and the USS Oregon, and they're going to help the U.S. get the third largest Navy in the world. So economically. We have way more goods than we can use, so what, what we're going to do is we're going to start trading them with other countries and getting raw materials that we need. So we'll give them what we have extra of that they don't have, and we'll get back raw materials to make more stuff and sell more, to become more rich. This is cultural superiority. So again, Americans combine beliefs of social Darwinism and cultural superiority meaning that the, the strong survive, and we believe that the American way is the strongest way. So Anglo-Saxon Americans, meaning Americans of British or uh, English descent, have the responsibility to spread Christianity and help civilize inferior peoples and bring them into the more advanced world. So now we're going to talk about a little bit of the territories that we claim. So U.S., is going to buy Alaska. Alaska is one of our last two states to join the Union. It was owned by Russia in 1867. We're going to purchase it from them for two cents an acre. At the time, we believe that there's nothing there. Since then, we know, besides land in general, there's a lot of resources, especially oil. So that is a huge money maker for us. So that two cents an acre is huge. And by 1959, it'll end up becoming a state. So after that, we go to our other of our last two states, and that's Hawaii. In 1867, uh, we take control of the Midway Islands, but people don't really seem to care that we took the Midway Islands. But when we take Hawaii, that's very important, especially for trade. One, it's about midway between in the Pacific between us and Asia, so it, it's a nice port place to so you can refill your ships and um, people can recover and get when we're trading with Asia, as well as some of the resources that they have. So the big export in Hawaii is sugar. So before it's part of the U.S., there's a huge tariff or a tax on importing sugar. And a lot of American sugar plantation owners are in Hawaii, and they don't want to spend all this money shipping it into the U.S. So what they do is they say, hey, annex Hawaii, let it become a territory, and then there's no more tariff. So they do this with a little bit of pushback from the, lo the, the local Hawaiians. So the queen, which is, I cannot really say her last name because it's too hard. I won't try. She has this Hawaii for Hawaiians agenda, and this works to strip voting rights from American property owners in Hawaiian uh, affairs. So the ambassador John Stevens will organize a revolution and that sets up a government run by Sanford B. Dole. And then in 1898, 
President McKinley is going to annex Hawaii. It becomes an American territory. And then later on, it becomes our a, a state within the Union. So that is going to do it for this video. And the next one, we'll talk about the first war of this class, which is the Spanish-American War. Thanks, guys.